Tonight on Business Live, more increases in prices of petrol products expected today after Total Energies took the lead selling a litre of petrol at 10 cities 99 pesos and 13 cities 50 pesos per litre for diesel. Also, economist Professor Peter Corti commends Bank of Ghana's inflation targeting framework so far as <clears throat> I beg your pardon, but criticizes government's weak fiscal policies. The Bank of Ghana has served us very well. Um, but it cannot be only uh, monetary policy. The current challenges we find ourselves also require fiscal policy. And on Joy Business Shopping List tonight, we are at the Malam Atta market to gauge the prices of food items following the surge in inflation. Ghana, mm. oh, 15. Mm. Mm. Sisi, I want to make sure, sir, because they're blown up. We have all these and more coming shortly. Just stay with us. Hello and welcome. I'm Charles Aite. Tonight, more oil marketing firms are expected to increase prices of petroleum products at the pumps today. And even as we pull up the you know graphics to help you appreciate what exactly we we're you know, meaning by what we have made in the submission. More oil marketing firms expected to increase from today, Friday. Total Energies, we are told, took the lead by selling a litre of diesel at 13 cities 50 pesos and 10 cities 99 pesos for a litre of petrol. Now, market leaders Goyle and Shell expected to also affect increment in subsequent days. The margin of increment will have an impact on pricing decision of 100 oil marketing firms across the country. Now, it is coming after the industry giants, Total Energies, as we've rightly seen, to the lead by selling a litre of diesel at 13 cities 50 pesos and 10 cities 99 pesos for a litre of petrol. Many will be looking forward to the margin of increase for market leader Goyle and other major player Shell because of its impact on the over 100 oil marketing firms in the country. Meanwhile, the margin of increase for diesel may fast track the increase in transport fares by the commercial transport operators. The Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPLTU, earlier this week announced that it will begin a series of public engagement before the adjustment in fares. But, you know, looking at the current development, transport fares could be increased from next week, even though we're getting indications that this could be increased from this weekend. We're going to keep an eye on this to give you updates as and when we do have them. But moving over to another story, the director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, ISA, Professor Peter Corte, has commended the Bank of Ghana for its role in fighting inflation as well as ensuring a relative stability of the city, despite challenges facing the economy. According to him, the fiscal policy of the central bank has failed to live up to, an, to expectation, a situation which has pushed inflation high and created some instability within the Ghanaian economy. He was speaking at the APSA Bank UPSA Law School Quarterly Banking Roundtable. According to Professor Peter Corte, the Bank of Ghana has so far done well in helping to bring stability in the Ghanaian economy. He's however worried the fiscal policy of government spearheaded by the finance ministry has been weak the rule is when you see overheating you see exchange rates moving in a certain direction then the central bank has no option than to intervene so that is devoid of any political intervention and, and it avoids the time inconsistency and policy reversal problem and that's what we have seen with our central bank uh, so far so so far the bank of ghana has served us very well um, but it cannot be only uh, monetary policy. The current challenges we find ourselves also requires fiscal policy, and, and we think that ought to be mentioned. Speaking at the same event, Director of Research at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Philip Abredu Otu, outrightly dismissed the misconception that the central bank's inflation targeting framework has failed to be effective. According to him, the framework is the best tool so far for helping to check the rise in inflation. We at the central bank feel there's some misconception out there. And when people hear inflation targeting framework, they think all we do is just chase inflation 
uh, and that we have nothing at the back uh, as far as real sector concerns are, uh, 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 as far as real sector uh, indicators are concerned. But we do look at both inflation and, and real sector. But I think first and foremost, the IT framework is a monetary policy strategy. Uh, if you look at it from that perspective, it becomes easy to understand what is going on here at the central bank. Jacob Broby, acting head of market at APSA Bank for his pact, expressed concern about the use of the inflation targeting framework at this time of challenges in the global economy to fight inflation. According to him, this has forced interest rates to go up. Given the high level of inflation that we are seeing uh, across the globe, uh, inflation as its highest in US, Europe, uh, Ghana here we are at about 18 year high. Uh, in the process, we've seen various central bank interventions and questions that comes to mind is uh, our central banks across the globe are going to continue to chase inflation. And if that is the case, then what is going to happen to uh, interest rates? Uh, currently, we've already seen interest rates the 91 day, for instance, move from around 13% uh, in March uh, to around 24%, right? So the question is, um, is that the sustainable path for, for the country to take? Away from that, Newmont Ghana has indicated its commitment to partner the government to drive improvement in the country's economic programs. This follows a successful sale of 3,500 ounces of gold to the Bank of Ghana and its first ever domestic gold purchasing program, which was launched in June 2021. This made the gold mining giant the first mining company to respond to the central bank's initiative, which is a very significant milestone in the fiscal history of Ghana. Here is Kwame Adukufo, the vice president in charge of government relations and strategic development at Newmont Ghana, speaking to Joy Business. I feel pleased to have been able to partner the, the Bank of Ghana as it sets out on its uh, domestic gold purchase uh, program. It's very much in line with our values of partnering government uh, to create value and improve lives. And um, this is very much in line with our, our mission. So we do feel pleased and we feel happy that we've been able, after collaboration and discussions with the Bank of Ghana, to come up with a model which can be replicated and leveraged by other large and small scale gold producers uh, to enable the central bank to procure pure refined gold and pay Ghana cities for it, and thereby boosting our reserves and uh, enhancing the resilience of uh, the Ghana city. Well, last year, Newmont Ghana paid a little over 1.86 billion cities in taxes and carried interest to the government as part of its fiscal commitment in 2021. The amount comprised corporate income tax and mineral royalties. Mr. Adukufo says the company will continue to invest in the country as it seeks more exploration. Everybody pays for gold or normally pays for gold the US dollars. We uh, accepted city payments from the Bank of Ghana in line with its objectives of using CD payments to buy gold, thereby uh, boosting the, the reserve, the gold reserve in, in a sustainable way. So let, let's look at your contribution to the national economy. I know you've paid taxes, uh, you've expanded to create more employment for Ghanaians, especially your host communities. In totality, what has been your contribution to the national economy? I can confirm that last year we paid around 1.9 billion Ghana cities in taxes and royalties and dividend. And the first quarter this year alone, we've paid 547 million cities. So if you simply do a simple extrapolation, we are sitting good to probably beat last year's target. We are a leading leading contributor to the um, fiscus. Away from that, President of the Ghana Canada Chamber of Commerce Association, Alexander Norte says the organization will continue to strengthen the promotion of Ghanaian businesses in Canada and vice versa. His organization, he claims, is dedicated to promoting Ghanaian businesses in Canada as high quality and efficient enterprises. 
speaking at a cocktail event to celebrate fathers, he maintained that the association is working to deepen its partnerships and relations with other Canadian businesses. The Canada-Ghana Chamber of Commerce Association is taking full advantage of existing opportunities and creating new ones for its members. Alexander Norte, president of the chamber, says its vision to build capacity, stimulate interest and create numerous opportunities for Ghanaian and Canadian businesses is still on course. Uh, yeah, we're always looking for, for ways of improvement. We're always looking for ways we can uh, help our members develop more business. Um, create partnerships so that is our key um, motivation to grow our members businesses and and provide new networks um, internationally he also stated that the association membership is growing necessitating the need to expand its activities and relations with canadian enterprises well we're actually here to celebrate uh, the fathers of the chamber um, as you know we're a strictly business uh, chamber but uh, we have a lot of fathers who, you know, though they're businessmen, they, are, you know, they, they look after the home and they are father figures. You know, um, 2019 um, and 2020 and 2021 were awful years, but touch wood, thank God, this year has been fantastic for the Chamber. We've, um, we've had a lot of members join and basically we've been able to do a successful uh, conference for a number of our members who have gone who are currently now in uh, Toronto. The association is expected to play a leading role in mobilizing other chambers of commerce with an interest and affiliation to Africa to create a shared economic and development vision for African countries. Now, the Ministry of Finance has signed a buyer's credit agreement with the Export and Import Bank of India to establish an assembly plant within 18 months. The 24.9 million city facility will assemble tractors, backhoe loaders and fabricate agricultural implements. According to the Finance Minister, Ken Furiota, the plant will make machineries more accessible to actors along the agric value chain. Export Import Bank of India is funding government to establish an assembling plant to make equipment for the agri sector. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Finance Minister Kenneth Furiata disclosed that training will be given to Ghanaians to empower them in operating a tractor assembling plant. Government in India, represented by Exim India, is providing government of a 24.98 million facility for the establishment of an assembly plant for tractors, backhoe loaders, and fabrication agriculture implements. And this is to be done by action construction. So the intention is to uh, bring farm machinery within the reach of small and marginal farmers, uh, popularizing agri machinery such as power tillers, tractors, backhoe loaders, power reapers, power pumps, paddy threshers, among others. The implementation of the project will start after the signing of the agreement in line with the project implementation schedule, the construction and installation of the project's plants and machinery and other civil works. It's expected to be completed within 18 months, including training from India. Resident representatives of Export Import Bank of India Ganapathy Selva Kuma said the agreement signed is to strengthen ties between Ghana and India as well as develop the agri link between both countries. India has made great strides in agri agriculture sector and uh, uh, we have reached a kind of expertise uh, in this area that we can contribute or even our technology and uh, our equipments are up well, it can perform quite a lot and uh, can provide at a very cheaper rate compared to any other uh, 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 agricultural similar companies which can offer. And therefore, this will bring a game changer for the people of Ghana. Meanwhile, Director for Policy, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation Directorate at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Richard Chumisi Ankara, lauded the initiative and described it as timely to support the planting for food and jobs program and mechanization agenda. 
these initiatives, apart from the huge investment on the government pays, also have also challenged the frequent breakdown of this machinery due to over-reliance on foreign products that are not able to adapt to tough terrain, lack of spare parts, where farmers are, those who own the tractors are not able to assess. It is in this regard that the Ministry of Food and Agriculture sees the establishment of an assembly plant for the local assembly of agricultural tractors and machinery as a major contributing factor to the success of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Action Construction Equipment Limited, an Indian assembling company, is expanding into Ghana. President for International Business Division, Naresh Chandra Sural, reveals the projected production capacity of his outfit. This is 4,500 tractors a year and uh, 600 backhoe loaders and 6,000 uh, disc harrow and disc plow and uh, 3,000 uh, tripper trailers. That's the capacity. Now, SMT Company Limited, the official distributor of Volvo Construction Equipment and Trucks, has introduced its Volvo FMX FH and FH16 trucks to the Ghanaian market. The Managing Director for SMT Ghana, Alex Dutambi, indicated that the new Volvo FM trucks are improved versions of the existing Volvo truck, taking into consideration the comfort of the driver and the cost of fuel. Here's more. Speaking at the unveiling of the vehicle, Managing Director of SMT Ghana, Alex Dutambi, explained the new range of Volvo trucks focuses on the drivers and cost efficiency among rising fuel prices. The Volvo, uh, especially the Volvo FMX, uh, was already a fantastic truck, but now it has been developed with new features to make it even better, but with a focus for the drivers we have a focus for the business owner. Why the drivers? Because we believe that if it's easy for the drivers to maneuver their, 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 their trucks, they can concentrate themselves on the productivity of the trucks. So, example that we have added to these trucks, the, the, explain, the, there is a, a feature which is called Volvo Dynamic Steering, where you can really steer the, the, the trucks even fully load without any efforts. This is a typical uh, feature that you have on the Volvo trucks, to uh, help the drivers. Vice President of Volvo Trucks Africa, Goran Travancic, says Ghana is a neutral choice to launch its new Volvo FMX and other trucks as his outfit looks to build a lasting relationship with the country. Ghana is a, a, a traditionally very important market for Volvo Trucks and our importer SMT here. And we are uh, present here for, for quite a good number of years uh, for both uh, Volvo construction equipment and Volvo trucks. So Ghana is a natural choice because uh, it is um, uh, the country which has a lot of need for demanding transport. You're watching Business Live, still to come in the bulletin on the Joy Business Shopping List tonight. We are at the Malam Atta Market once again to gauge the prices of food items following the surge in inflation. Do stay with us. 20 Ghana. Mm. Oh, 15. Mm. 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 Sisi Adia. Own to me, Shani, sir. Because I blow no. 7 million. I'm to wish you a way, sir. I apply, sir. I was wrong, yeah, sir.
and you're welcome back from International Summerish. Now, we are six months into the year and already prices of food items continue to see a sharp increase. Traders in the various markets have been widely affected by this. They lament the high cost of maize, corn dough and cassava dough as, you know, real troubling factors. On today's edition of the Joy Business Shopping List, Beverly Brom speaks with some traders at the Malamata market. Here's what she found. Business shopping list. We are back to Accra after bringing you two episodes from the Ashanti region. Today we are the Malamata market and we want to gauge the prices of maize, condo, and other food stuff here on the market. Join us if you are preparing to go for shopping this weekend. That's the Ulum. One Ulum. That's 12 feet. Mm. But right now it's rather 14 feet because of the cream of the fuel. Mm. Uh -huh. But I see that we have different cars. We have the yellow cone and yeah. the normal cone. Does it, is the price all the same? Oh, uh, no. Some of them like the yellow one and some do like the white one. But how much is the white one? Well, the white one is 13 feet. Mm. 13 CD for one Ulum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Like this one. 13 CD. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. before, how much were you selling? Oh, before is 12 CD. Mm. 12 CD for one. And, and you are telling me about how very soon the price of maize will go down? Yes, because of the new maize. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If it started, the old one will go down because some of the people like the new one. Uh -huh. So, small time, like maybe ending of this month or next month, we will get some, the new ones. So, you will let the price will come down. You, you said something that I want you to repeat that this whole market, one of the cheapest things is uh, uh, maize. If you grant this one, and you cook it, the whole family will be okay. Mm. There's 15, 14 cities and the 12 cities. If I rather grant this one and I cook banku or akwele, a lot of people will be okay. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> if you ask anybody, anybody, mm -hmm. that you want to go to Sister Efe, you rather see me. Mm. And I would rather look you very much you enjoy me what, what shall i say we mention it for tegan and i weigh 25 weigh 30 i hear we know we 30 mm. 25 mm. and see yes yeah, shall see if we back it then first now what on the same we 20 ghana mm. or oh, 15 mm. Mm. see see here see see here own to me shall say because i blow no Seven million. to a a 2.5 a bro a bini bo be ba fon kwa 25 ana 2 million 3 million ana 35 out there say this here there and con is ah okay my for your phone kwa chika mm. because you say 2 million you say 8 million na e bi wo mpa e bi wo and see you must say last year before mm. christmas no na e bro ko to ko na moton ni say 5.5 mm na si si ako si ako uh, seven six point five uh, getting to any seven mm. Mm. because a bianini ni kotokoni ni size is mm. 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 Banchimore no so yeah and she shen is saying and no ba pent and we be a she wea twelve that's what I say. Yes, yeah, shall we? Oh, oh. 
That's what she said. she found us so. Lolly fair. What is it? Oh, Muba, Lolly fair. Nibu head, Nibu head, Nibu head. Into first night to meet up with Toko and be five hundred and three hundred, four hundred. She said until this hour. Over to a one point five. There you have it. I guess this could guide your spending choice this weekend. Well, that'll be it for Business Live. I'm Charles Aite. Many thanks for watching.